you know, in this country alone, we use nearly 40 billion of these plastic spoons, knives, and forks a year. That's enough to fill the entire National Mall several times over. Utensils like these are made from hard plastic, and most get sent to landfills, where it takes thousands of years to decompose. They also use up a lot of oil. It takes more than a million barrels a day to make all the plastic we use. But there is a way to make it without using oil and without filling up our landfills. It's called bioplastic. Good to meet Hello. you. Hello, how are you? Good. So we're going to learn how one of these is made. This is Frederick Absolutely. Shear. I'm going to show you all the secrets. All right, let's go. He's a chemist by trade, but he's also the owner of Seroplast, a bioplastic manufacturing company here in the middle of corn country, Seymour, Indiana. This is either corn or tapioca. We can use also wheat, rice, and other kind of materials. The starch from those materials are heated and then converted into a biopolymer. That's the building block of bioplastics. The biopolymer is then formed into these pellets, called resin. The resin is then sent to factories like this one in Tijuana, Mexico, where they can be put into regular plastic making machines, saving money on building new machines. The price of oil also makes a big difference. We have realized that the price of oil is such at $100 a barrel, we are at parity. Uh, on all our hybrid or sustainable products, which is making it very attractive. And potentially helping to save some space in those landfills. Bioplastic utensils can break down in a matter of months. We can make that, those kind of products out of corn, send them to a compost site, in 180 days they go back to nature, and the cycle goes again. But there's a catch. Uh, a lot of land that used to be in uh, conservation uh, plant plantings uh, is being taken out. Andrew Hug land is an environmental taxed. analyst. He says if we grow more corn for things other than food, the farmland won't get the break that it needs. Uh, the more you've got soil that's exposed like this, the more erosion you get, um, and uh, the more we lose our ability to grow food in the future. Shear says that doesn't have to be the case. Here at Terry Plus, we have taken a commitment and that commitment is that within the next three to five years, 30 to 40% of all our feedstock and all the resins that we'll be manufacturing will come from non-food related material, either cellulosic material and also algae byproduct material. But there's another issue. For bioplastic to be considered biodegradable, it must decompose 60% in 180 days. But according to a study from North Carolina State University, if it does decompose quickly, it gives off methane, a greenhouse gas. If it decomposes in less than two years, then that methane all goes to the environment and uh, probably doing more harm than good. To avoid that, bioplastics need to be composted, and that can get expensive. Earlier this year, when Republicans took control of the House, they ditched the bioplastic tableware in Capitol cafeterias saying the cost of composting them, almost a half million dollars, wasn't worth it. But that doesn't mean bioplastic flatware isn't catching on elsewhere. Just a few miles from the Capitol is Ted's Montana Grill in Arlington, Virginia. George McCarrow is the CEO. Customers, our guest base, are looking for restaurants that are on the leading edge. McCarrow switched to bioplastics for takeout meals at all 46 of his restaurants. They still cost him more, but he says that would change if the rest of the industry followed suit. If McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, any of them would go out and bite the bullet at first, and we could actually get the supply of these elements, prices would actually go down. What's not going down? The bioplastic market. In fact, the use of bioplastics has tripled since 2006. Frederick Shear is projecting that in five years, bioplastics will be a $5 billion market worldwide. One of the things I'm very proud of is that the products that we are making are American products made with American workers, with feedstock, which is coming from our country. Look at what we have done here. We have created about 70 green jobs, and we, uh, we anticipate to create even more than that. So bioplastics has the potential to be good for the economy and good for the earth. In Seymour, Indiana, Dan Goldstein, Energy Now.